Yeah, so we should say a twin prime conjecture. One of the biggest problems in the history of mathematics, Goldbach conjecture also. Um, they feel like next door neighbors. Uh, is there have been days when you felt you saw the path? Oh, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes you try something and it, it works super well. Um, you, you again, again, the sense of mathematical smell uh, we talked about earlier. Uh, you learn from experience when things are going too well. <laughs> because yeah. there are certain difficulties that you sort of have to encounter. Um, um, I think the way of, of colleague might put it is that, um, you know, like if, if you are on the streets of New York and you put in a blindfold and you put in a car and, and um, after some hours, um, you, the blindfold is off and, and you're in Beijing. Um, you know, I mean, that was too easy somehow. Like, yeah. like there was no ocean being crossed. Even if you don't know exactly what, how, what, what was done, uh, you're suspecting that there's something that wasn't right. But is that still in the back of your head to... Do you return to these to the prime? Do you return to the prime numbers every once in a while to see? Yeah, when I have nothing better to do, which is less and less net time, which is I get busy with so many things these days. But yeah, when I have free time and I'm not and I'm too frustrated to to work on my sort of real research projects, and I also don't want to do my administrative stuff or I don't want to do some errand for my family. Um, <laughs> I can play with these these things um, for fun, uh, and usually you get nowhere. Yeah, you have to you have to learn to just say, okay, fine. I, once again, uh, nothing happened. I will I will move on. Um, yeah, very occasionally one of these problems I actually solved. Uh, or sometimes, as you say, you think you solved it, and then you're euphoric for uh, maybe fifteen minutes, and then you think I should check this because this is too easy, too good to be true, and it usually is. What's your gut say about when these problems would be uh, solved? Um, Twin prime and go back. Prime, I think we'll keep getting, keep getting more partial results. Um, it does need at least one. Uh, this parity barrier is, is the biggest remaining obstacle. Um, there are simpler versions of the conjecture where we are getting really close. Um, so I think we will, in 10 years, we will have many more, much closer results. We may not have the whole thing. Um, yeah, so twin primes is somewhat close. Yeah. Riemann hypothesis, uh, I have no I mean, it has to happen by accident, I think. Uh, so the Riemann hypothesis is a kind of more general conjecture about the distribution of prime numbers, right? Right, yeah. It, it's, it states that sort of viewed multiplicatively. Like for, for questions only involving multiplication, no addition, the primes really do behave as randomly as, as you could hope. So there's a phenomenon in probability called square root cancellation that, um, you know, like if, if you want to poll say, America, uh, on, on some issue. Um, and you, you ask one or two voters, and you may have sampled a bad sample, and then you get, you get a really imprecise um, measurement of, of the full average. But if you sample more and more people, the accuracy gets better and better. And it, the accuracy improves like the square root of the number of, of people you, uh, you sample. So yeah, if you sample um, 1,000 people, you can get like a 2 3% margin of error. So in the same sense, if you measure the primes in a certain multiplicative sense, there's a certain type of statistic you, you can measure, and it's, it's called the Riemann-Zeta function, and it fluctuates up and down. But in some sense, um, as you keep averaging more and more, if you sample more and more, the fluctuation should go down as if they were random. And there's a very precise way to quantify that, and the Riemann hypothesis is a very elegant way that captures this. But um, as with many other ways in mathematics, we have very few tools to show that something really genuinely behaves like really random. And this is actually not just a little bit random, but it's, it's asking that it behaves as random as an actually random set, this, this, this square root cancellation. And we know, actually, because of things related to the parity problem, actually, that, that most of us usual techniques cannot hope to settle this question. Um, the proof has to come out of left field. Um, yeah, but uh, what that is, yeah, no one has any serious proposal. Um, yeah, and, and there's, there's various ways to sort of, as I said, you, you can modify the primes a little bit and you can destroy the human hypothesis. Um, so, like, it has to be very delicate. Um, you can't apply something that has huge margins of error. It has to just barely work. Um, and like, um, there's like all these pits, pitfalls that you have to, like dodge very adeptly. 